that's the great thing with platform as a service. There really isn't downtime. You can continue to develop. This is a Security Weekly production. Security Weekly is a resource of Cyber Risk Alliance. The Cybersecurity Collaborative and WIDS is proud to present CISO Stories. Each week, CISO Stories takes a deep dive on security leadership with one of the contributors to my latest book, the best-selling CISO Compass Navigating Cybersecurity Leadership Challenges with Insights from Pioneers, as well as from other top CISOs and security thought leaders. The Cybersecurity Collaborative is a unique membership community enabling cybersecurity leaders to work together in a trusted environment. To learn more, visit securityweekly.com slash CSC or visit cyberleadersunite.com. Hi, I am Eden Kobinoff Tolly, uh, CTO expert at Wiz, and joining me today is Eric Hart, the CISO of Cushman and Wakefield. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, let's get started. You are in this incredibly impactful and important role as the CISO of Cushman and Wakefield a true global leader in commercial real estate. I'd love, and I'm sure listeners would be very curious to hear how you got started in security and how that led you to your current role. Sure. So I got started in security well over 20 years ago. Really, I had started my career in technology working on a help desk working in computers, building, you know, then moving into networking um, and just building IT. While I was working in my career, I got an email from a friend that says, hey, we're looking for somebody who has expertise in certain technology, and we, we break into banks. Now, this was all legal and stuff. This was working for a consulting firm, so I wasn't really you know, breaking into a bank and stealing things, but they were, they were looking for that expertise. And that's when I started as an IT auditor working for a CPA firm, and that's what we did. We broke into banks electronically. Um, we did things physically as well. Then from there, really, as I worked there, one of the banks that I used to work for very regularly asked if I would come in and be you know, their first information security officer, and that was really really kind of the start of when you saw those CISO-ish types of roles. I think then they were information security officers. The chief role was something most companies didn't hand out, you know, quite a bit. So I did that for many years. I did that for over six years for, for a bank. Also led physical security there for a while. After the bank, I had moved to a trading firm. So a lot of very high speed, high frequency trading, a lot of fast moving technology. After that, I went to go work at Leo Burnett, leading their global information security. And this was really my first step into truly globalizing security. How did you look at it? And really, how did you look at it from a customer asking you to do these things? Not necessarily a regulator, not necessarily a bank auditor or a financial auditor from that point, but really the customers and all the different things you needed to do to meet their requirements. After that, I uh, went to Zebra Technology where I was their CISO and was really brought in when they bought a business unit that was more than double the size of the organization. So really having to take security from where it was and you know transform it into the next step of an organization that with the signing of a pen, you know, more than doubled in size. I was at uh, Zebra for a number of years till I was recruited away um, where I'm at today with Cushman and Wakefield, putting in those things and working through our different technology areas and including helping lead some of our technical and infrastructure areas for the past four and a half years. So it's really been an interesting journey through a lot of different organizations and different different requirements, whether they come from regulators, whether they come from clients. And that's really made a, a very robust career for myself. Absolutely. It sounds like that. Fascinating and exhilarating trajectory of seeing all these different stages and uh, companies. Wow. I'm curious to hear from your perspective today, what trends you're seeing in the cloud and with the rapid pace of innovation and technologies, which I'm sure you've now seen throughout your career, but today specifically in infrastructure as a service and platform of a service, what trends are you um, seeing that are just continuing to emerge? Well, I think you see the trends now as, you know, 
technology is really taking the stage of, and I, I call it the, you know, moving away from the, you know, traditional data center sort of things where a lot of organizations, when you used to set up technology, if I look back into my banking days, when we had to set up technology, um, if I wanted to set up a, 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 a log collection system from proposal to going through the approvals to getting systems to implementing, you were talking three to six months. Now, mm -hmm. those things happen for a lot of organizations in 24 hours or less, or you're just subscribing to a service, whether you're using AWS, whether you, you're using Azure, those things are there. You can subscribe to as a service and really set up nothing. I really see the trends that you see that rapid pace of innovation is IT starting to shift because collectively, Technology groups have been bad at managing hardware, going through the replacements, managing the infrastructure, the patching, the all, all those things. With the, the rapid pace that business and people expect things in, you know, you they can't keep up with all that on top of all the applications and services they're expected to deliver. Because at the end of the day, the the end users, they really just see that service, that availability. So that's where you see, you know, those sales forces and those work days and all these, you know, SaaS platforms, you know, what do you expect? You expect that to be up. You, you expect it to be available to do your work. I mean, I see there's a lot of growth, you know, in IaaS as people start to move things out of data centers into, you know, into IaaS platforms. For example, you look at Microsoft where they're putting extended support for a number of years on Windows 2012. If you move it to their Azure cloud, you get three extra years of support from them. Or if you keep it internally, you have to buy that at a cost. So obviously, you know, efforts to move those things there. You also see a lot of organizations, including ours, really trying going, really trying to go through and modernize these applications. So move them off of servers, you know, move them off that infrastructure, and either move them to SaaS or spend the time and effort and move those to the platform as a service, where you're managing services, where you don't have to worry about those upgrades year over year, the hardware end of lifing, all these other migrations, where you really put that on an Amazon, a Microsoft to take care of that. And that's where I really think, you know, things are going to continue to grow is people moving to things more as a platform, as a service. Um, as I mentioned, tr IT is really transforming away from running infrastructure and getting to more applications, data, and services. And this is where IT, the next really, you know, my vision of IT is, is we're managing services, no different than in my security group. I don't want to manage infrastructure. I don't want to manage servers. Servers. I want to manage services. I want to manage security services. I want them to be available, and I want them to be available no matter where the work the user is working, whether they're at home, whether they're at a client, whether they're traveling. That that should be available. You know, really, if you look at it, the velocity of things is just so much faster with vulnerabilities with everything nowadays. As I mentioned at the beginning, where sometimes it could take you three to six months to stand up an environment where now you can have a service running in less than 24 hours. This is the key trends for cloud and why it will continue to evolve. And while people will continue to expect things in short periods of time than the way it used to be. The article this podcast is based upon can be viewed in the best-selling cybersecurity leadership book, CISO Compass, Navigating Cybersecurity Leadership Challenges with Insights from Pioneers. Well, it's such a um, astounding to see how fast these trends make their way through the security world and how everyone and all these organizations are continuing to adapt and evolve alongside it. So you you mentioned you know how you at Cushman and Wakefield adapt and you know adjust to this. So I'd love to kind of shift for a second and hear what's going on there and how you are set up and what the infrastructure of Cushman and Wakefield is. So the infrastructure of Cushman and Wakefield is is it's kind of in two parts. So what I'll call the first part is yes, we are a lot we are cloud first. Um, but this also means we are use a lot of SaaS 
applications and solutions. Some of our biggest, most key things to running the organization are SaaS. Now we set that aside and then we look at the other side of what I'll call the more traditional IT. Yes, we have a number of things in the IT data center, but it is our goal and path to migrate on many of those things to the cloud in one of two ways. Number one is with the infrastructure as a service. As I mentioned before, how do we take systems and stuff that may be nearing end of life end of support, move them into a model and get you know additional support? So that's step one. Step two is then, okay, once you've done a lot of that, how do we look at the application services that are running on those systems? And we look to say, okay, well, what is the path for that? Is it an upgrade and continuing to run that on infrastructure, or is it a path to move that to platform as a service and really modernize those applications? And again, as I mentioned, I think it's critical and key for most organizations to really start moving to platform as a service um, or SaaS, because you really want to get into running things and, and managing services and information and analytics, not necessarily worrying about, oh, this hardware is end of lifing, you know, oh, I've got to replace this. Oh, I've got to go through and, you know, large projects to migrate data centers and downtime. That's the great thing with platform as a service. There really isn't downtime. You can continue to develop. You can continue to get those things. And the stuff, again, that IT has been bad at, you, you really put on the onus of, you know, the Amazons and the, and the, um, Azure's to take care of for you. Um, you know, in our environment, it, it's important, and this is why it's been critical for us to make sure we have the right cloud visibility in place because more of our risks are moving to infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. So, how do we, you know, look at our environment and get that visibility around it? Um, our goals, you know, over time is to continue to get rid of more infrastructure and move to those platform as a service. But I have to make sure that we have the right security monitoring and visibility around those. In lieu of that transition, what measures are you putting in place to protect your architecture? Sure. So one of the measures we put in place is really putting in a cloud security platform and partnered with Wiz uh, to do that. There's been a key thing for us is um, making sure that we can operationalize our cloud security platform um, with the resourcing we have. And one of the big things has been the operationalization of that. With Wiz, we've been able to plug it into our environment. Uh, we are primarily an Azure shop. And really, it's been set it up once and not have to continue to do changes, continue to do implementations as our, you know, environment grows and shrinks. As I mentioned before, things, you know, get stood up, things get taken down. It was really one of those, how do we deploy it? How do we get the right visibility and, you know, measures and, and you know, vulnerability tracking, other stuff like that, and do it once and then get the output from it that can go to our security operations center. So that's, you know, for me, one of the key measures has been, you know, how have we, one, been able to operationalize that with, with the minimum amount of hours up front? Number two is how are we making sure we're getting those alerts and visibility to configuration issues, to vulnerabilities, you know, as, as other things have come out. And those alerts that are actionable by our security operations center, it can get to the right people to make those um, changes to our environment. Amazing. And what a load off your back to be able to make that transition into focusing on actually remediating and fixing rather than, you know, identifying and having that visibility. It's interesting because, you know, you, it gets, it's, it shifts and it changes and your focus has evolved to something um, new as we've been discussing. But it's interesting how you implement change in such a huge organization with such a vast architecture. I'd love to hear how you're keeping up with the pace of change within the organization and like alongside that, what, what expertise is needed to make that happen or what processes do you put in place to even manage that complexity and that scope? So it's obviously with a very large organization, we have over 50,000 employees, over 400 offices across the world. 
you know, keeping pace with the change is, is very difficult. You know, number one is we do the different things in cloud. You know, my biggest thing in security as a whole is how do you get visibility, no matter where it is, no matter where they are, whether it's with a, with a user when they're working, you know, anywhere and the certain things we've deployed on, on computers or into our cloud environments, how we use Wiz and plug those into the cloud environments to have that visibility. Again, as new things are, are, are implemented, you know, or things are taken down that it's, we've set this up once, it's part of our environment and we don't have to continually do it every time a new server, you know, a new infrastructure as a service is stood up or we use more platform as a service. And that's been key for us. Um, you know, some of the ways that we keep pace with the changes, number one, obviously having regular meetings with our key providers. So for example, Microsoft, you know, CrowdStrike with Wiz and others, making sure we're meeting with them regularly to understand what are the different changes that are going on? How are those things you know, impacting our environment. What are those new things that are coming, especially in the Azure environment, you know, that we can look at and make sure that we have coverage? Again, it, it gives me a lot of comfort knowing that we've deployed Wiz and it's been able to plug in and like monitor for those, you know, nefarious items for those changes that are going on. And I don't have to worry that every time a new system stood up that, oh, did did X, Y, or Z get installed on the system rather that it's part of our, you know, our tenant and our environment. And those things where those alerts can go to our security operations center, they can go to our level four engineers, I think is important for us to keep a, a proper security posture. That is incredibly interesting to hear. And, and also just impressive how you have 50,000 people and you are able to operationalize Wiz and operationalize your security posture like that. Wow. I would be incredibly interested to hear from your vantage point, what advice you have for other security teams and leaders as they embrace the cloud as you have and as they work to stay agile? Sure. So I have really kind of three key points. So number one, you know, for for us, as we look at the environment, we look at the market, finding and retaining, you know, what I'll call the cloud people is incredibly tough. There's just tons of jobs out there. People are moving around. So when, when I look at this and say like retaining you know, attracting talent is, is very difficult. It's really, you know, one, if you find good people, how do you continue to grow them? How do you continue to make sure you're keeping them involved and engaged? I also think part of that too is making sure you also have good partners to work with and augment as obviously sometimes people are going to come and go, but you know, you're always going to have these systems. So how do you have the right partners? I also think that like, to retain and attract and retain those people, you have to have the good partners that those people can learn from. So whether you're partnering with Microsoft, Amazon, or their various other ecosystem of partners, making sure you have good ones in place who can help you with those really tough times, those really new things that are that are coming out. And then, you know, the one last thing for, for me, which has really helped in my career, is make sure you have a good peer network that you're talking to. You know, in the region I'm in, we have a, a private email group where a number of us, you know, are trading emails about all different types of topics, security, sometimes not security, you know, those things can include cloud stuff as well, and really making sure that you have that, not only for yourselves, but also how do you find that for your people? How do you have it, whether if they're cloud, is there certain you know, groups, peer meetups, those sorts of things happening that they can exchange these ideas from? So, so you're not having to constantly, you know, cr you know, invent a new architecture. You can ask people questions. You can find out how they've done sorts of things and use that and see how it applies into your environment. And again, the talking to peers, I think, is you know one of the biggest things of how I grow as a security professional. And I try to have my team make those kind of relationships as well. Amazing. I th it's it's so interesting how fast it's evolving and it's this continuous education that doesn't doesn't stop at any point. And I think it's also incredibly inspiring to see all the, you know, the new generation of cloud people as they continue to become more and more educated in and, and, and as it grows in the workforce. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, for me, you know, as I look at my team and how I grow them, I'm always looking for those educational opportunities for them, number one. But number two, it's how can I 
get them connected with their other peers so they can learn and grow and have those meaningful discussions, both professionally as well as, you know, socially with some of that as well. Fascinating. It's really, really impressive work. And I can speak for myself that it was incredibly just interesting to hear everything you had to share. So thank you so much and appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. WIZ is on a mission to help every organization rapidly identify and remove critical risks in their cloud environments. Purpose-built for the cloud, WIZ delivers full-stack visibility, accurate risk prioritization, and enhanced business agility. WIZ connects in minutes using an agentless approach that scans both platform configurations and inside every workload. We perform a deep assessment that goes beyond what standalone CSPM and CWPP tools offer to find the toxic combination of flaws that represent real risk. To learn more about Wiz, please visit securityweekly.com/wiz.